Well, let's uh, look at the Word today. Open your Bibles to Hebrews 6, and we'll uh, get into the Word of God. And you know what? We're kind of looking at it con uh, concerning uh, this past week and, and several of the past message, uh, series that Brother Moore spoke. How many know we receive some of the best Word? Yes. Amen? Yes. Of uh, uh, anybody, and I'm not saying other people, there's good word going on all over the nation and, and throughout the world today, but God has blessed us with, with some awesome, awesome uh, ministers, our, our pastor, uh, even Mrs. Moore, uh, good ministers. And, and uh, how many know that while that word is awesome, that sometimes we forget what we heard, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Right? Yeah. And you know, when you forget the word, you become discouraged. Why? Because you forgot the word of encouragement that you heard, right? right. And so we don't want to just go away and think we'll remember everything we've heard forever. That's right? right? That's <laughs> and, and we want to be encouraged and we want to be encouragers. Uh, but the, the main thing is, is we not only want to hear, we want to obtain. You know, what, what if Abraham would have heard what God said? He said, I'm going to bless you, make you a great nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And Abraham forgot that. <laughs> and later on, you know, somebody said, well, you're, maybe, you'll, maybe, maybe you'll have kids someday. And he said, I just don't know if I will or not. Why? He forgot. Well, what, what if he didn't forget? Because he didn't. What if he went ahead and obtained it? You know, in fact, is look at the verse. That's what we're talking about. Um, Hebrews 6, 12. It says that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherited the promises. Inherited the promises. It, you, know, you notice it doesn't say receive the promise. Because he received the promise when God gave the word. Right. If you got a word this week in your marriage, if you got a word last Sunday through the message that Brother Moore gave, if you got a word a year ago, then you should have received it then. Whether you've obtained it yet or not, you should have received it right then. Yes. Right? Faith receives. Patience obtains. Yes. Right? Yes. Faith receives and patience, patience obtains. Because... If you, if you receive it by faith and then you refuse to quit, guess what you're going to have? You're going to obtain the promise. And, and that, that's so many times where in between, somewhere in between faith and patience, we get discouraged. And, and that's, that's what the devil's trying to do. He's trying to get us to be discouraged and quit. Because the only way you, you won't obtain is if you quit between faith and patience. Amen? Yeah. And, you know, and a lot of people would get offended just reading this verse. And offense is the number one way of quitting. Yeah. That's right? right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't like what he's saying anyway. I don't care if it is in the Bible. He can give me 3,000 verses to prove that he's right, and I still wouldn't believe. Well, guess what? You didn't even get the first one done, so. Amen? You know, even look at this verse. The verse says, be not slothful. A lot of people say, is he calling me slothful? <laughs> you know, so I went ahead and went to the uh, Strong's Concordance to look up what slothful meant, and that's not going to make you feel any better. <laughs> right? I'm going to read this verse with their literal and figurative <laughs> translation. The literal translation would say that you be not lazy, which you could say be not a slacker. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Huh? Be not lazy, but followers of them who through faith. But the, but the figurative, figurative, very professor-like, would say that you be not stupid. <laughs> stupid. That's what it is, lazy and stupid. So when we choose to be lazy and stupid, then we don't follow. Now, I didn't say that. It's the Word of God. Now, I have been lazy and stupid. Right? 
Lazy. Lazy sometimes just won't get off the couch to get a drink of water even when it's thirsty. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know. Not going to say anything. <laughs> They'll, but they'll buy the clapper so they don't have to turn their lights out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or in my case, get an Alexa. <laughs> Glory to God. I can just sit in my chair, Alexa, turn off the lights. <laughs> right? Or, or get your wife. <laughs> Honey, were you getting up? Will you get me something while you're in there? <laughs> uh-huh. None of you can identify with that. <laughs> but lazy, slothful, will quit, is why he says don't be that way, because you'll quit. When, when we become lazy, uh, first of all, you won't do it. If you become stupid, you won't hear it. Amen? Or you'll, or you'll forget the word you heard. And, and you don't want to forget the words you heard because you heard good word. So you always want to be excited about those things you heard. And, and not only do we have the, the God of encouragement and comfort, we have the God that gives us endurance. Um, we have all the time Then he puts us in us the ability to encourage and comfort. Right. Amen. And, 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 and endure. Uh, look at look at Romans. Romans 15. How, how are we going to inherit the promise? Come to marriage meeting? Huh? Come, come to church every Sunday? That's how you hear the promise. So I, that's how you hear the word of God. And then faith comes by hearing. Right? But if you're going to inherit what you, what you heard, you're going to have to do. And many times, that all the time, that is patience. And patience isn't what we have made it to be. You know, we've made patience. Well, I've waited and waited and waited. I've been waiting a whole week. We're like little kids that asked for something an hour ago, and we can't believe we've had to wait that long. And that's not even what patience is. Patience isn't just waiting. Patience is a joyful endurance. You know, patience will go out and prepare <clears throat> after it's heard and gotten faith. Yes. You know, patience in our case was what decorated the baby's room when we decided, when we believed God, we'd have a baby. We didn't have a baby yet, but we'd received a baby. Amen? And so Kim went in there, started decorating the baby's room. Sure enough, we obtained the promise. Yes. <laughs> and she inherited a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> I told you last time I preached, just gave her everything she wanted, worked out good. You guys can take that for what it wants, for what you want. Amen? But patience doesn't just wait. Wait is a much bigger word than that also, but patience doesn't just sit there and wonder when it's going to happen. That's worldly patience. That, that's, that's, discour that, that, that's how you get discouraged, first of all, because... You're, you're just sitting there tapping your fingers on the desk, wonder when that's going to happen, wonder if it's going to happen. And that's what you're believing, that's patience. If you have an if in there, there's no patience involved. Because if you got it through faith, you already have it. Yes. Now you're just obtaining it with your patience. Amen? I'll use my Taco Bell analogy again because Jody likes it so much. <laughs> Friday night after service, we went to Taco Bell. I ordered... Received it that I would get that already, drove to the window, and waited patiently, expecting to receive my tacos. <laughs> Guess what? They came. Yes. God is much more certain than that. God is much more certain. Taco Bell could run out of something. God never will. He doesn't run out of anything. And then God not only tells you to... He, he not only tells you to be patient, He put love in your heart, which means you have patience. Because love is patient. It's the first quality of love. It's long-suffering. It's kind. It's patient. That's the first quality. Any Christian that says, I just don't have any patience, then you don't have love. Which is not true. What, you, what we should say is, I just don't want to be patient. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's not us though, right? 
Romans 15, 4 says, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. In other words, the Word of God that we've heard and that we've read and that we've received, it was put there to teach us. It was put there to teach us. Everything we heard last week concerning marriages, concerning just the good things that God has and, and how to operate in His love and different, different things, all that was put there to teach us. Amen? And that's a good thing. You want to be taught. Because that's the first thing you have to be. You have to have a word from the Lord to have faith in. Amen? And so once you get that word, you're going to need to have endurance and encouragement. And the scriptures also will do that. It says, it says they were written to teach us so that through endurance and encouragement. So after last week, after last Sunday, after last Friday, after the last good message you heard... It's not over. Amen? It's over in your heart if you've received it by faith, but you're still going to have to obtain what you've received by faith. And it's going to take endurance, which another word for that is patience. Amen? And encouragement. Amen? But I got good news for you. I got really great news. Look at the very... Next, or well, finish this verse first. It says, through, through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. What are the scriptures? They're God speaking to you. God is the ultimate encourager. He will not only give you the promise, He will encourage you and get you to obtain to the place where you obtain the promise if you'll trust in Him. Yes. Amen. If you'll go to Him. Uh, that's waiting on the Lord. What, what are you saying? I received it by faith. What's waiting on the Lord? Taking no other option. Right? right? Never quitting. You know, you know why Harry and Ruth are married 61 years? They didn't quit. Right? right? There's no other reason. Right? If they'd have quit, they wouldn't have been married 61 years. You know why people get healed? They don't quit. Be healed, don't get healed. You don't get healed, you be healed. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Same reason people be saved. They don't quit. Quitting is the enemy of faith. It's the enemy. Why? Because it eliminates patience. Quitting eliminates patience from the faith and patience package, if you will. There's a faith and patience. God says, you want the faith and patience package? Here you go. This is the package I'm offering today. If you have faith and patience, you'll inherit the promise. Yes. Amen? Yes. Yes. Glory to God. He's a good God. And through encouragement of the scriptures, you should have hope. Bible hope. Bible hope is an expectation that you're going to have that you've, what you've already received by faith. You notice how all these words interlock? You know, sometimes I'll go to the concordance and I'll start following the numbers. And, of course, it tells you it's part of another number. And you go down to that number and it takes you through like 60 different numbers. Yeah. Finally, you got the word broke down so far that you don't even know what it means. <laughs> you forgot what you were looking at in the first place. <laughs> Why? Because you can break it down a long ways. But where you need to stop is where it means something to you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. When, when you find that word that hits you in the heart, say, that, that's what I'm having. Yeah. Joyful endurance. Yeah. I'm going to have patient, joyful endurance. I'm going to receive the things that God has for me. Amen? Whatever that word is. And, and hope, hope. No one has ever put their hope in God and been made ashamed. So if your hope is in God, you're getting ready to have what you've received by faith. Amen? Amen. And, and these are, these, again, these are words that we want to know what God means when He says them, not what the world means. Because the world, when they say hope, they're just wishing. They're, yes. Man, I sure wish this had happened. You know, I wished. I wished. You know, in the marriage meeting, you could listen to what Brother Moore was teaching and he could read the scripture and say, man, I wished my husband would do that. I, I wished my wife would do that. But that's not hope. That's not hope. A hope wouldn't say a word. It would just get this expectation in its heart and, be, and begin believing that that's about, about to happen. Yes. Amen? And, and 
the first mistake you made was you were listening to God for your husband or your wife instead of for you. Right? It's like sitting here and Brother Moore says something really good and you say, man, I hope they're hearing, hearing that today. And what, what, what I just did was I missed what it meant for me. Right? Because I don't need to hope somebody else hears it. I need to hope I hear it and live it and then I'll be example for the person I hoped heard it. Amen? Amen? I mean, I know a lot of you are thinking, well, sure, Kim can think that way because she's got Dave. I mean, what better husband, what greater example of a husband could you ever need? <laughs> Guess what? I'm so thankful for the word that transforms us. Yes. You know, and when we hear that word and all the guys that were here on men's night know how important hearing is, yes. right? Not just the word. But listening, amen? How many guys in here are good listeners? Quick listeners, yeah, quick listeners, amen? Then, then if we're quick listeners, we're hearing that word, we're gaining that faith, and, 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 and once we have faith and we've received it by faith, the hope that's within us rises up, and, and, and it begins to obtain those things by patience, by patience, amen? Amen. And then verse 5, Paul's going to pray for you right after he... Right after he reads, uh, writes that verse, he's going to pray for it. He said, may the God who gives endurance and encouragement. So now for people that say, you know, I just can't wait. I'm just no good at it. Guess what? God's going to give you some. Yes. Amen. Yes. You say, I, I, I've been waiting for all these years. God, no matter how long you've been waiting, he'll encourage you to endure more, to go further. Why? Because he knows if you do, you're going to get what, you're, what you've believed for. He knows that it cannot not come to pass. There's your double negative for the day. Amen? When, when we choose to believe God, not only will he give you the faith to believe, to receive, then he'll encourage you and exhort you and give you patience. True godly patience. What's that? That expectation, that joyful endurance to wait until you've obtained. The th and, and you're not just waiting. You're not, you know, it's, we, Brother Moore said something to me, uh, me and Mike out in the party. I don't think he said it in the sermon. But he said, we look at God like he's like us. Right? So if we say be patient, what we mean is just sit down there and wait and shut up. That's not what God means. He means you already got it. Just go through the steps to obtain it. Amen? I, I've already promised it to you. Never lied. Never gonna. Amen? That's true of your healing. That's true of your peace. That's true of your prosperity. Everything he's already promised, by faith we can receive it. By patience we can have it. We can obtain it. Amen? We, and, 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 and I want to encourage you today through the Spirit of the Lord to not quit on these things. How many, well, don't raise your hand, but there's many people in here today that heard messages all last week, went home Saturday, had a fight in your house, and you already forgot everything you heard last week because you're like, ah, that doesn't work. You know, I thought he'd change after he heard that, but he didn't change. She didn't change. I thought they would change. <laughs> well, it got quiet. I only meant people at another church that were watching by, you know, not, not anybody here. That would never happen here. Guess what? The thief comes immediately to steal the word. You know, you know who he comes for? Every person that gets the word. Right? <laughs> Every person. And why? Because he wants you to quit. And without the word, you aren't encouraged. You aren't, you aren't, in, you, you, and if you aren't encouraged, you won't endure. Amen? Discouraged people don't endure. They quit. Why? Because th their faith is lacking patience now. Why? Because you're discouraged. So we want to be encouraged that God himself, not only who gave you the faith to believe, gave you the word to, to believe, to, to put your faith on, He's also going to give you the endurance and the encouragement to walk it out. 
Amen? How many have ever went through something that during that thing you always knew you were going to come out on the other end winner? That's, that is patience. That is faith and patience working together. You hadn't won yet in the world's eyes, but in your heart, you, had, you were already victorious as the, as the song they say. We were already victorious. We're not waiting to become victorious. We became victorious when we made Jesus Christ Lord of our life. And now as we gain knowledge of His Word and we hear His Word and we gain faith in who He is to us, then we, we excel in these other things. We begin to speak healing over our life and receive it. We begin to speak prosperity into our life and receive it. We begin to have peace that passes understanding. We begin to get things and receive things that the world is never going to have. Right. Amen? Amen? Because why? Because we have one thing they don't have. We have an unfailing God who gives us an unfailing word with unfailing patience and unfailing encouragement. There will never be a day where God won't encourage you to, to keep, to stay the course. You know, there'll never be a day where you say, ah, oh, I've been believing for healing for three years. And God says, I know it's not going to work this time. He's not a discourager. He's an encourager. He'll, you'll hear in your spirit and you're closer than you've ever been. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't faint. And he'll send people around you and they'll say, you're more than a conqueror. You can do this. You can do all things. You'll make that finish line. Push through. What's he doing? He's, got, he's put his spirit in them to love you that day. What, 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 what are they loving me? How are they loving me? They're encouraging you. They're using the love of God that never fails to give you unfailing encouragement, unfailing endurance, unfailing patience. They're using the gifts of God to keep you going. How many are thankful for a brother or sister of Christ that, that encouraged you at a time that you needed encouragement? He puts those people around us. We are those people. I want to be that person every day of the week. Yes. Amen? Yes. That somebody can call and ask, oh, you got a problem? You know what? I got on my own. I got my own problems. I can't, I can't help you. I can't even help myself. How can I, how can I help you? You can't help me. Right? How many, how many aren't glad when you call somebody like that? But guess what? If you who are thinking that way will stop, even though you're not encouraged and you'll begin to encourage somebody else, give and it shall be given unto you will begin to happen. Right. Amen. Amen. Amen? Encourage and you shall be encouraged. Press down, shaken together, right? Running over, shall, shall men encourage your bosom. Yes. Amen? Amen? People say, he's twisting the scriptures. No, he's not. Encouragement is a gift that you give out of God's love. Amen? Anything you do out of the love of God is a gift. Yeah, yes. Amen? For God so loved the world that He gave. And, and that's what love does. And when we begin to give out of that love, then, then we, we encourage somebody and they endure and they obtain. Amen? And it doesn't matter what your day's like. You don't have to be having a great day to encourage somebody. In fact is, the best day you could encourage somebody might be your worst. But after you finish encouraging them, you'll be encouraged yourself. I've never encouraged somebody where I didn't feel better when we were done. <laughs> That's not why you encourage people, but it does work. You know, sometimes when you're discouraged, you don't just call somebody, I need to encourage you so I'll feel better. That's not going to work out. <laughs> Probably they're going to have to encourage you to be encouraged. Amen? Glory to God. I don't know where we were. God gives that. That's where we were. Romans 5. God is who gives that encouragement. And, and if you'll, no matter if you're by yourself, if you start feeling discouraged, if you start feeling like you're about to quit, then it's time to find that scripture. It's time to get quiet with the Lord. It's time to go look on the refrigerator. Right, y'all got the cards on the refrigerator? Right, you know, my, mom, my mom's refrigerator was a card. Right? Yeah, it's, it, 
It's like, is there food in there or is this just for cards? <laughs> Thank God there was food in there too. There's food on the outside, food on the inside. It was a good thing. <laughs> you could have the good food and then get in there and have some okay food. Amen. <laughs> But it's time to look at that scripture. It's time for those brothers or sisters to come around you. Amen. Look, look at uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. <clears throat> we don't want people to quit. Why? Because we know if you don't quit, if I don't quit, you will obtain the promise. It is an impossibility to stay and wait on the Lord and trust in Him and not receive, and let me rephrase that, not obtain what your faith has received. Amen? Yes. And we want to obtain what our faith has received. And better yet, I want you to obtain what, our, what your faith has received. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5.14, it says, And we urge you, this is the uh, NIV, I believe. It says, We urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle... Encourage the timid. And again, now we look at encourage the timid. Look at it in the NIV or the King James. It won't help you at all. But look at it. Feeble-minded. That's even worse. Right? You know, how would you like somebody to call you and say, you know, I feel like you're feeble-minded. I want to encourage you today. First of all, that's going to discourage you. Right? And again, so what I did is I thought, I'll look up feeble-minded. Why? Because I want to know what it means. Because... I don't believe I'm feeble-minded, right? And that word means faint of heart. Encourage those who are about to faint in heart. That's what God's saying. So if somebody calls you feeble-minded, don't think anything of it. <laughs> think they're there to help you that day, right? Right? Well, don't, they're not calling you stupid. God called you stupid in Hebrews 6. <laughs> <laughs> If you're slothful, and lay, you know, if you're slothful, if, if, you, if faith and patience are at work, you're not stupid or lazy, right? <laughs> but, but comfort the, the feeble-minded means encourage those who are about to faint. What's he saying? He's saying every day I want to exhort you to be an exhorter. I want to exhort you to walk about looking for somebody to encourage. Remind them what they just heard. Remind them who they are. Remind them about the victory we have in Jesus Christ. Remind them about the health we have in 1 Peter 2.24. Remind them of the goodness of our Lord who has never failed one person ever, ever, ever. And somebody might say, he failed me. No, he didn't. No, and if that offends you, I'm sorry, he did not. If he did, we wouldn't be here right now because the world would explode because the world is upheld by the word of his power. Amen? Amen? So at any time, if God's word fails, we will be gone. But guess what? It's never going to happen. He's never going to fail. He's never going to leave you in it lacking. He's never going to leave you in a bad place. Even if you're lacking today, if you'll get back on that word that, 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 that excited you, that got in your spirit and brought up faith, God will bolster that faith and give you patience to obtain that very thing that you hadn't obtained because you quit. Because the other good thing is that if we quit, God's merciful. And you can jump right back in. He won't say, no, you quit. You can never have that. No. No, we play till we win. That's right. If we decide to get back in the game, God says, they're back. And the, and the devil says, well, you can't do that. And he says, yes, I can. That's right. right? That's my child. They're born victorious. They're more than a conqueror. Right. They, they can get, they, they've got faith in their heart. That puts them right back. Right? Now all they got to do is work that patience. Work that patience. Cheerful, hopeful endurance. Amen? And as they work that and they're encouraged and they're an exhorted and, they're, and they're, they wait. They wait. And in the middle of it, all of a sudden they say, I'm tired. I'm tired. Lord, what I need to do? And the Lord says, open up Isaiah. Go to Isaiah. Isaiah, 20, Isaiah 40, verse 28. The Lord says, 
let, let me give you some encouragement. He said, ah, oh, but I'm tired, Lord. I've been waiting a long time. He says, nah, you ain't been waiting at all. He says, I got good news for you. Amen? And you've been waiting and you're getting tired. And the Lord says, I'm the one that encourages you and I give you endurance. And he says, ha have you not known? Have you not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. What's he saying? No one bigger than me. Amen. Haven't you heard that there's no one bigger than me and I'm on your side? That's right. Amen. Haven't you heard that I created the very thing that you're seeking? I gave healing. I gave everything you're looking for. I'm the everlasting God. There's none before me. There's none after me. I'm always... Amen? And if that doesn't encourage you, let me just tell you, I don't faint. Amen? Amen? If you look like you're going to faint, good news, I don't. I don't, and I'm right here with you. I'm right here with you. I never leave you. I never forsake you. I will be right here with you, and I don't faint. And not only do I not faint, I don't get tired. Right? In other words, if you've been waiting 50 years, I'm still not tired. Glory to God. I'm never going to be worry. I'm weary and, and, there's, and I know everything. That's what it means. There's no searching of his understanding. That's, that's Dave's translation. Right? I'm big, I'm good, and I know everything. That's what he just said. Amen? I'm big, I'm good, and I know everything. And, and, and when, the, when the devil tries to say, you're not going to make it, you say, whoa, 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 my God's big, and he's good. And he knows everything. Yeah, come on. Glory to God. Glory. And he hasn't even started breathing hard in this marathon. <laughs> we were watching yesterday track and field, college track and field. And this girl from Mizzou, she's running the 5,000 meter. I don't know how far that is. It's a long ways. <laughs> you know, you run over, well, for me, if you run over 10 yards on the track, you run a long ways. <laughs> But, I mean, you run over 12 laps, and you've run a long ways, and she'd just run 24 the day before because we watched her. And she's running this 5,000 meters, and she wins. She, she, she accelerates at the end. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I mean, I'm panting hard just watching her. I'm wearing down right there. And she crosses the finish line, and she keeps going. She doesn't pass out on the ground. She does, I'm sitting there. I told Kim, I don't even know how she's standing up. I would be laying down on the ground begging for oxygen <laughs> after one lap. <laughs> I'd get through one lap and say, I need oxygen. <laughs> Forget this. And see, that's what so many of us are like. Yeah. We don't want to take the patience it takes to train. That's right. That's right. right? She trained a lot of years to yeah. be able to run 5,000 meters. Yeah. I've trained zero. Right? So even if I had faith that I could, I'd need a whole bunch of patience to obtain it. <laughs> Glory to God. But, but I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, man, that's good stuff. She won that race because she refused to quit. Not only did she refuse to quit, when she saw the finish line, boom, extra jets come out, and the girls behind her, they're like, they're like, I. Oh, and she's, I'm like, whoa, smiled. She, she looked up at the screen, saw herself in first place and smiled. That's the first time I've ever seen someone jog over a mile smile <laughs> while they were jogging. Doesn't mean I'm going to jog, sorry. That's, she was encouraged, what, by seeing that. And when she saw that, it made her go faster. When God encourages us, it causes us to accelerate and to, and to move towards that finish line at a quicker pace. And, and at something that those things that have been dogging you behind you can't catch you anymore. They can't catch you. The devil says, you're not going to make it. You're not going to have enough money. Uh, you'll never have peace. You'll never have joy. You'll never have it. And he's a liar. And you're accelerating. And you're getting farther and farther away from him and closer and closer to the finish line. And, the, and as you're getting, that's what you've got to remember. Every step further away from him is closer to the finish line. 
And the Lord is at the finish line. He's saying, come on, come on, you got this, you got this. And he's got other people standing around there that you know, and they're saying, come on, you got this. And when they do, you get strength. Why? Because encouragement strengthens people. He's the God that gives power to the faint and strengthens those that have no might. In other words, I'll give you power when you feel like you're about to quit and I'll, strength, I'll strengthen you to where you finish. Amen. Glory to God. What a good word. Yes. And those are the things you remember next week, the week after when things don't, you're not sitting in the red chairs at church. You're sitting in the real life of the world. And the devil says, you're not going to make it. Look up at the big screen. It says, I give power to the faint. And you start jogging. You start, you high step it. You don't be like me, Joe. Like, I can't even see the screen. I'm so blurry eyed. I've been doing this 4,000 meters and I still got 1,000 to go. I can't do this. No, get rid of your clapper. Get rid of your, get, get rid of the person bringing your water. Get up, go to the refrigerator yourself and win. Glory to God. He's got a good plan and then he gives you the ability to operate in that plan. By faith and patience, we obtain the promise. It's, it's not in question whether you're, you'll obtain, it's in question whether you'll make it to the obtaining place. And the only thing in question there is, can the devil discourage you? Can he get you to quit? Can it get you to stop at any point? I don't think I got a bunch of stoppers in here, quitters. Amen? I don't want to be a quitter. Amen? I want to be that person that stretches his legs and accelerates. Why? I want distance between me and the adversary. Right? I want a good distance. I want him to be so far that when he talks, I can't hear what he's saying. Yeah, he'll have to be, he'll be behind me like this. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. Why? Because he can't keep up with me. Why? Because I'm running in the strength of the Lord. I'm not running in my own power anymore. I'm not doing this race by myself. I'm running in his power, in his strength. He's encouraging me. He's giving me the endurance. Amen? And as, as I run that race, I refuse to lose. I refuse to lose. Why? Because I got his word encouraging me. I've got him himself. The very person of God. Look at Isaiah. We're going to close with this verse. Just because it's time to close. I can feel it. <laughs> because we've got this. We have this. If I could say anything to anybody today, you've got this. You will make it. God had a plan for you to succeed before you started this trip. Amen. Amen. He had planned for you to get to the other side before you got on the boat. Yes. Amen? Yes. And, and through faith and patience, you will get those things. You will receive those things. Uh, where did I say to go? Um, I didn't mean Isaiah 40. I, it sounded good at the time. I liked it. It seemed good. But where I really wanted to go was Isaiah 41. I was so close. God encouraged me to go one more chapter. <laughs> Amen. One more chapter. Thank you, Lord. He says in Isaiah 41, verse 13. For I... What do we got? King James? Look at the NIV. It says, for I am the Lord. What's he saying? Same thing he just said in Isaiah 40. I'm the everlasting father. I'm the creator of the universe. I'm big. I'm big. He's not bragging. He's telling you who he is. The, 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 in fact, his big doesn't even describe him. You know, this, this is where we look at God like he's like us. He's nothing like us. He's big. Whew. He created what you're standing on. And everybody else in the whole world is standing on what he created. And he's upholding the thing that you're standing on. Amen. He's big. He's big. And that's why people say, well, then he could do anything. He could do anything that your faith can believe. That's what he can do. Anything your faith can believe, he can do it. 
Why? He's the Lord, and He's not going to leave you without help. He's the Lord, and He's your God. What's, why does He say it like this? Because those are two things you need to know. He's the Lord, and He's your Lord. Amen? Amen? He's your Lord. You don't want to be like the sons of Sceva, you know, or in, in the name of the Jesus which Paul preaches. That's how you get beat up and naked. <laughs> right? We're not looking for them to be them at all, are we? No way. No way, no how. We want to know not only is he the Lord, he's our Lord. Amen? He's our Lord and he's our help. He says, I'll take hold of your right hand. <laughs> this, this is a perfect picture of a father. Perfect picture of a father. Come on. We can do this, son. Come on. I got, I got you. And you know what? When you're with daddy, ain't nothing can hurt you. Ain't nothing in this world can hurt you. And he says, I'll be daddy. I will take your right hand and don't be afraid. I'm going to help you. Amen. If you're believing God for something, you're not just believing that you're going to make it through. You're believing you're going to make it through with him. Why? Because he's going to take your hand and he's going to help you make it. Yes. If there's an obstacle in your way, He's going to kick it out of the way. If there's something, He's going to help you jump over it. He's going to give you strength. He's going to give you power. He's going to produce in you whatever it is you need to, finish, to hit the finish line. He's the Lord. We don't have to be afraid. Fear is quitting. Fear is the enemy of faith. It's the enemy of patience. It will quit every time. Why? It's afraid. It can't do it. Oh, I'm just afraid. I don't know if I'll be able to do it or not. Why? Because you're just afraid. Don't be afraid. He's got your right hand. When you start feeling that little fear, go like that. Just hold tighter. Hold tighter. I remember when I was a little kid and we would go someplace that was just a little bit scary to me. I remember we were at the river one night fishing and, and dad was next to me though. I was okay. But when it got a little dark, you're like, ooh, it's a little dark out here. You're on the river. Unless the moon's really bright, you ain't got no light, right? And so I nudged a little closer to dad. Got a little darker, nudged a little closer to dad. Time to go to sleep. You know where my, where my sleeping bag was? Next to dad. <laughs> Amen? Smart children rely on their father forever. There will never be a day where he'll say, go off by yourself. I'm not, I don't even need to be around you anymore. Well, there will be when you're in heaven and then you'll just be around him forever. Right? On this earth, he's your help. Yes. He's your help. He'll be right behind that bike until you're riding yourself. And then while you're riding yourself, he'll sit there and smile watching you. And you know what? If you're riding yourself and you fall down, you know what, you know what the good father does? He runs over there, picks you up, says, oh, you're okay. Dusts that gravel off in the bruised knee. And then he puts you back on the bike, says, okay, I got you. And he does it again. And how many times do you need that? How many ever you need it? He'll be right behind you. He doesn't quit. He doesn't quit. Have you not known? Did you not hear that the creator, the everlasting God, creator of the universe doesn't grow weary? Right? He doesn't get tired. He never faints. And he's your father. He's got a good plan for you. He's got a good plan for me. And he's standing right beside us. Everything we've heard this week, everything we've heard on the past Sundays and Fridays, the good word that he's put in us that we've, we've grabbed hold of by faith and we've put it in our heart. He's saying, finish the course. Obtain those things that you put in your heart. Don't just talk about them. Obtain them. Obtain them. How are you going to obtain them? Through patience. You're going to obtain them. I'm going to encourage you. You're going to endure and you will receive let me replay that. You will obtain. You already received by faith. Amen? You will obtain those things that you received in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Glory to God.